friends, welcome back to my channel. Sass here. I'm here to do another week of tomfoolery. Now, let me just start off by saying that I went to the dentist Tuesday and he messed my mouth up. I mean, he was doing drilling and pulling and tugging and I'm like, did I do something to you? <laughs> oh my God. It was, oh my God, the pain. It hurt so bad, but um, I'm here. I hope you can hear me. I can't really um, talk that loud. Um, I'm not going to be my animated self. Uh, sorry about that. I'm trying to take it easy on my mouth. Whew, Lord, he messed me up. I hate the dentist, but, you know, I can't be walking around here with summer teeth, okay? Some right here, some right there. Mm-mm. I can't do it. No, nobody, nobody. Uh -uh. I like to chew my food, not drink my food. All right, let's get into it. All right, first off, I do not like to talk about politics on this channel or in my real life because it stresses me out. And um, I, just, I just don't like talking about it. But we need to discuss y'all's president. Now, it has been over 30 days, um, I think it's been 35 days, of this government shutdown. And it does not seem to be coming to an end. And here are federal workers who have families, bills, um, just to go on with their daily lives or without um, a paycheck. Um, we see that it is, it is affecting them. I mean... The airports, the TSA workers, they're, they're fed up. They're like, oh, you got a machine gun. <laughs> Go on through. I mean, somebody is going to end up getting hurt. Or we're going to have some other country look at us and say, oh, well, <laughs> honey, them TSA workers aren't working. <laughs> this is a perfect time. Just because y'all's president is throwing a temper tantrum. Okay. Now, he said that Mexico is going to pay for that wall. And people believe that. People actually believe that the Mexican president was going to pay for this wall. Y'all know the Mexican president was not going to pay for no wall. He gave out your president the finger and said, go F yourself. That's exactly what he said. So now your president is throwing a temper tantrum. Um, He's done had this government shut down. Him and Nancy Pelosi are going at it. Nancy Pelosi said, I don't know who you think I am, but you're going to find out who, you, who I am. So they're button heads. Meanwhile, no one is thinking about the federal workers um, who are going without. And that is a, a shame. And I feel so bad for them. I'm not a federal worker. I'm a state worker. And... Uh, I get paid monthly. I think most federal agents, uh, may be wrong, get paid bi-weekly. Um, I get paid monthly. And that means budget, budget, budget. I have learned to budget my money very well. Um, I didn't used to. I used to be a mess. About the, you know, end of the month, I, I have nothing. Okay? But I have learned to budget uh, my money. But I can only imagine if, you know... They say you're not getting paid for a whole month, a whole month of February, a whole month of March. And I just got, the last time I got paid was January. Can y'all think about that for a minute? Can you think about the last time you get a paycheck was the whole month of January. And then you have to pay those bills, but you have to somehow ration it out for February and March. You're going to lose everything that you have. Your car, your home, your lights. How are you going to be able to eat? I mean, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And I hope that they come to a resolution because this ain't it. I feel so bad um, for them workers. They had a video of this woman. And um, she, would, she, would, she just broke down. And she started crying. She continued to go to work. The hardest thing she's ever went through. And I can imagine. I just hope... Um, they come to a resolution before it gets worse. I mean, y'all, what is the solution? I, I just don't know. But anyway, I just want to, you know, hit on that. I, I, I just think it's, it's a shame. And I hope that 
um, sensible minds, intelligent minds come together and work this out. Um, I don't want a wall. I don't want my money going towards no wall. You know, if your president want a wall, won't he pay for it? How about that? All right, let's talk about uh, Shekinah. Okay, this is hilarious. Shekinah um, is friends with um, Tiny from T.I. and Tiny. Tiny was in a group escape. Shekinah was also on that show, um, uh, T.I. and Tiny show. And she's hilarious. I've been following her for, for a while, for a long time. And so she does this Instagram live. And she has like people, you know, come in on her Instagram live and she just talked to them. Honey, Shekinah is country as hell. I can say that because I'm country. I mean, we just all. So, this girl pops up and Shekinah, just as she is, says, where your hair at? <laughs> so, the girl was like, what you mean, where my hair at? And she was like, where your hair at? So... She was like, you know, I guess it was quick wings. I don't have no edges. You know, she was like alopecia. She said that she used um, um, some drops and, um, you know, some more stuff. And so she kind of was like, well, that ain't it. You know, you have alopecia. You need to go to a dermatologist. So the owner of um, Kaleidoscope, and I think the drops, the people that make miracle drops and Kaleidoscope, the owner contacted this girl that they are calling No Edges. Y'all, I wish y'all could see her. I'm going to leave a link down below. I'm going to find a video and I'll leave a link down below so y'all can watch this. It's, oh my God. She don't have any hair right here. I mean, literally no hair. And then she just has like a little piece of ponytail that looked like a gear shift. She looked like one of those, y'all remember those old Kung Fu theater movies and the um, Kung Fu masters didn't have no hair right here? <laughs> That's what she looked like. They have a ponytail. Anyway, so the owner of Kaleidoscope contacted uh, No Edges and was like, listen, I will fly you to New Orleans. I will give you a complete makeover with makeup, hair, clothing. And she did. And the girl, No Edges, was so happy. Okay. Now, No Edges is messy. That's all it is to it. Now, apparently, the owner of Kaleidoscope named Judy. And No Edges was in a car. And according to No Edges, they were talking crap. I'm sorry. She, um, Judy, was talking crap about Shakanda. Okay. And she filmed it. She taped it. Okay? And she said that Judy said Shekinah was uh, washed up. That um, she don't have any money. Um, that the hair, um, that her product line didn't go anywhere. That um, she, she's just, she's just ghetto. All this stuff. So, no, it just went back and told Shekinah. Child, tell me if that's not three-way high school, want to get into a fight crap. Who does that? Instead of no edges being appreciative and grateful for getting her hair done, you know, getting flown out, uh, getting shoes, getting clothing, Judy actually paid for a week's back. I think it was like $700, five to $700 she gave her. And then she goes back and tells this mess. So she goes back and tells Shekinah. She was like, girl, they were talking about you. She was talking about you. She was saying you was ghetto. You was washed up. You ain't no cow. All this stuff. So Shekinah goes off. You know, Shekinah was mad as hell. So Superset. Now Superset is someone who um, has a makeup line, that Crayola. Uh, makeup case. She makes money. She made a million dollars in like an hour. New um, Black Friday. She's making bank. Well, she's friends with Judy. Okay. Now, Shekinah also is friends with Superset. So they get into it, and Superset was like, "You why are you why are you listening to a stranger over Judy? Why would you think she would say that?" And so Shekinah was like, "I heard it." Okay. 
She um, videotaped her. She recorded her. I heard what she said. And she was like, I'm through with her. She can go to hell and all this stuff. So Super Sin was like, well, did you hear me? And so she was like, nah. You know, she was like, nah, I didn't hear you. But I heard Judy. And I heard what she said. So then Judy, she gets on her Instagram and said, look. That's not how it went down. That's not how it went. Listen. Bottom line is no edges. Is messy. She was ungrateful. She started this whole mess. And I, I mean, apparently this girl must have never had nothing in her life. Ever. And instead of saying, thank you, Judy, for this, she goes back and starts a mess. Then they start talking about clout chasing. I wish people would drop that word clout. Look. Okay. So then, No Edges gets on Instagram Live with Shekana. Okay, now, Shekana done had it out with Superset. Shekana done had it out with Judy. And it, it's just been a big mess. So No Edges, she done went on Instagram Live and said, I burnt that wig up. She said, I put it in the aluminum. She said, I put it in an aluminum trash can <laughs> and burned it up. Child Shekana said, no, you did that. No, you didn't. And she said, yes, I did. She said, I burned it up, girl. Honey, she pulls up this matted piece of hair. Y'all, it looked like Brillo pad. I will leave everything. I should. I'll leave the videos. Y'all, I holler. I said, no, this girl didn't burn that up. $600 wig, y'all. $600. She said that she didn't want to feel like a charity case, so she burned it up. Girl, you started this. It was, a, what do you think it was? They was trying to do some nice. And then you go back and you run to tell Shekinah all this mess instead of keeping your mouth shut. Girl. So then they gave her these atrocious, now I have to admit, these boots that they gave her, child, them things was a mess. I didn't like it one bit. She burnt those up. She either burned them up or threw them, threw them away. She burned up clothes. Honey, this girl was a ratchet hot mess. I don't know. No edges. Okay, no edges. I think she had like a couple of thousand followers. And after this, she's up to like 15,000 followers. It's crazy out here. It is crazy how grown women, successful grown women, can get caught up in a bunch of mess by a bunch of he said, she said, or she said, she said, okay? This girl had no business in going back and telling Shekinah, um, recording conversations. She had no business doing that, and it, it's just it's just a shame. It's, it really is. So, anyway, um, that's that. Now, there's not... Nothing else is going on. I mean, I can't think of anything else. But I do want to say my, um, I do want to um, talk about Netflix. Okay, now, I want to give you a couple of my faves from Netflix. Killer Mike, trigger warning, go check that out. It's, um, I think it's six or eight um, episodes. And each episode has a social experiment. Very good. Go check it out. Um, also, um, the series You, Y-O-U, <laughs> very, very good series. It's about a guy who falls in love with a girl. He becomes obsessed with a girl, and he's a killer. Go check it out. Um, the Ted Bundy tapes. Um, it's about the serial killer Ted Bundy. He was insane. This man. Um, killed um, 30 women across four states. He escaped jail twice. Um, he defended himself in court. He was his own lawyer. He fired two lawyers on the spot while in court. Honey, it was, I have read so many books on Ted Bundy's. I have read so many books on serial killer periods. I have watched probably every movie on serial killers. I know um, Quinn Tarantino is doing a movie about um, Charles Manson and the Manson killings. I can't wait. Child, I can't wait for that. So, 
I found stuff like that intriguing. I don't know why. But anyway, those are a couple of shows that um, I think y'all y'all would like. So go go check it out. It's on Netflix. And there's a show called The Passage um, on Fox. It comes on Monday nights. It's really good. And also back to Netflix, the Fire Festival documentary. Y'all y'all need to watch that, honey. Joe Rule. They got these folks out here looking up that child. That's another good documentary. Y'all, y'all need to quit going to these half festivals. Y'all out here baking, no food, no water. Living in Phil got feces going on around you. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all paying all that, but y'all really need to be ashamed of himself. Ashamed. But anyway, um, this is just a quick video, y'all. I didn't have too much. My mouth is tore up. And uh, to my new subscribers, welcome to the family. I appreciate you. Uh, one of my most asked questions is, where am I from? I am from Virginia. Yes, I have a thick accent. I didn't realize my accent was that thick until I started making videos and people started asking me about it. Um, you know... I, Everyone around me talks like this, so um, I, I didn't think it was prominent. But I remember I was either in New York or on a cruise, I can't remember, and some guy asked me and my friends, you know, what part of the South are you from? <laughs> and so we were like, we're from Virginia. And he was like, had the strangest look on his face, and he said, well, that's not the South. Um, sir... I don't need for you to go back to elementary school. <laughs> what are you talking about? I think most people equate Virginia to um, D.C., Northern Virginia, um, the DMV area. Um, you know, Virginia is a big state. You know, we um, many parts to it. And I live in the southwest part of Virginia. I border North Carolina, um, Tennessee, West Virginia. So, you know... Um, I guess our accents are a little bit more country <laughs> um, than the Northern um, Virginia accents. I guess they probably have a more of a Baltimore um, um, DC accent than um, our um, accent. Our accent is just thick. But um, I appreciate y'all asking me where I'm from and y'all thinking that I'm from the Deep South, Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana. I don't know where y'all think I'm from, but Virginia is my home state. Born and raised. So, all right, guys, that's that. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. I'm sorry this is short, but I wanted to give you something. Also, tomorrow, I will be putting up um, Love After Walk Up, and um, y'all have a, um, a good night. And until next time, friends, bye.